For I am crucified with Christ And yet I live Embrace the cross Welcome to Crossbound Ministries, where we are bringing the gospel of Jesus Christ to the world, encouraging Christians and pointing sinners to the cross. Will you please pray about supporting our broadcast and ministry that gives us the ability to spread God's word? You can get involved by going to crossboundministry.com. Please welcome our preacher, Mike Sadler, as he brings us an important message from God's word. Embrace the love the cross requires. Cling to the one whose heart... Amen. Open your Bibles with me to James. James chapter 1 and verse number 1. And today, we're going to look at some problems. Do you have any problems in your life? Have you ever had any problems in your life? Do you have a problem every day? Do you see problems in the future? Are they on your map? Do you see problems in the horizon? I promise you, if you're saved, you're going to have some problems because you are in a battle, a spiritual battle. It's a spiritual war, and the devil is going to do everything he can to attack you, your family, your testimony, and everything he can to attack you and your ministry, especially if you are living and putting God first in your life. Amen. The devil's coming after you with both barrels. But God... God wants us to move forward. And I've always had that saying, moving forward for the Lord. And where I got that was from my mom. She always said that, Michael, there's no sitting still with God. You're either sliding back or you're moving forward. And I think God just showed that to me one day, moving forward for the Lord. So I try to keep that in my mind. But if you move forward, if you make progress in your life, I don't care in what facet it is, problems are the price of progress. I'm going to say that again. Problems are the price of progress. Thank God for problems. Amen. So as today, as we look at this in the Bible, what God's words had to say about it in James chapter one and verse number one, the Bible says, James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes, which are scattered abroad, greeting So he tells you right there who he is. I'm a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is to the 12 tribes which are scattered, which is God's people. And let me tell you, if you're saved, you're God's God's son, you're God's daughter, you're God's child. And I want you to notice this. This is very important. Notice how James puts God and Jesus on the same level, level. They are one and the same. He says, James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, James knew that Jesus is God. He's God in the flesh. James chapter 1, verse number 2. The Bible says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into divers temp- temptations. Have you ever seen a tractor dragging a plow across the field? You know, you could a farmer could go out there and take a lot of seeds and he could put them, dump them out everywhere. And he'd probably get a few uh, harvest. But it'll be nothing like if he were to take a plow and cut and dig and soften up that ground before he plants that seed. And what that does, it gives that seed soft soil to go into so that it can sprout and bring forth life. Can I just say that's how you need to see the trials in your life. It's God's tractor plowing across your heart so that he can soften your heart to put good seeds in so that they can grow. Why do you think he says, my brother, and count it all joy? Is it joyful when somebody attacks you? No. Is it joyful when your car blows up? No. But it's what comes out of those things that can be joyful. Remember, God can take something horribly, horrific, and bad. Not that God caused that, but God can use that in his mighty way of getting his work done in a way that only God can do, in a way that only God can fully understand. 
All that we can simply do is be obedient. The more that I grow in Christ, the more I learn about God's word, the more I realize all I can really simply do is be obedient to what God says. And you know what? That's all God wants. He just wants somebody that will listen to him. Amen. And so if you'll look at that as those as those problems in your life, as those storms in your life, that it's just like a tractor plowing up that ground. It breaks up the hardness of your heart so that good seeds can be planted and God can bring forth fruit out of your life. Holy trials are, are problems which are sent from God and or allowed. Because God may allow just allow some. But listen to me. If you are a child of God, if you belong to Him, if your name's written in the Lamb Book of Life, there ain't one thing that can touch you that does not have to pass through the hand of God. So God may have caused it and He may not. But God had to have allowed it. He God had to allow it. And so test it also tests the reality of your own faith and it produces Christ likeness in your life when you respond in the right way. I can tell you with my own self that some of the trials that I went through, some of the attacks that I went through, it's really showed me of my own self how much I truly trust God because let me tell you why, you run to who you trust. You go to who you trust. And I know in my own life I've run to God every time. Oh, sometimes I'd throw a fit or get mad or say things I shouldn't or, or, or have a, a hissy fit, as some would call it. But I tell you how, how great it was when I got on my knees and I gave it to God. And I said, Lord, this hurts. I don't like it. I don't want it. But God, whatever it is you're trying to accomplish in my life, I want to allow it. So please help me with that. Make sure that you're approaching those problems in your life in that fashion. Because the Christian life is filled with problems. You know, the moment I got saved, I felt like just everything was going to be perfect from then on. Because I walked outside. I remember I walked outside going to work. And before I got in the car, I looked up in the sky and I never felt such peace in my life. I was right with God because I had gotten saved, because I had gotten born again. So I thought, man, everything's going to be peaceful from here on. But the truth is, the truth is, the moment that you get saved, that dirty, rotten devil is going to show you just how real he really is. And he's coming after you. And so a Christian life is filled with problems. And you have got to trust God with those problems. But you've got to also know this, that you must be making progress if you're having problems. Because problems are the price of progress. You know, when you're sitting on the couch not doing anything, you don't have any problems. The devil's not attacking you. But when you're moving forward and you're trying to build something or, or preach or have your whatever your ministry is, because God has called everybody to do something, even to be faithful to church and tithe. God has called you to that. And when you're faithful to what God has called you to, problems will come. They come uninvited and they come unexpected. I'm going to say that again. Them problems come uninvited and they come unexpected. Lots of times they come out of nowhere and you wonder how in the world would this happen? But you remember what Paul said, think it not strange when these fiery trials come to try you. He says, expect it. It's going to happen. The devil's going to attack you. Sometimes they come singly, and sometimes they come in droves with just hundreds or thousands of them. But they are inevitable. You will have problems. If you stroll through life and never have no real problems, you might want to check yourself how you are with God between you and God, because the devil's going to attack the children of God. He has ever since he's got a chance, but God can use that. Just like in the book of Acts, when they, they were the Christians were scattered because of the, the attacks upon them. And we're talking physical attacks, also spiritual attacks. And those people ran every which way they could. But you know what they took with them when they ran every which way that they could? They took the gospel of the Lord Jesus to Christ. They took the saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ and they spread it. So when the devil was trying to stomp it out, he actually just spread it around. 
and God can do the same thing today. Many times we read that and we read things in the Bible and we go, we think they're different. But let me tell you, they were people just like me and you. God's looking to you, somebody just like you. And you say, but I have nothing and I'm nobody and I'm quiet and I can't say much and I get nervous around people. You're the perfect one God wants to use. Because God can do great and mighty things in and through you if you will allow it. God wants to use you. All you have to do is make yourself usable. Raise your hand and say, here am I, Lord. Send me. And if you make yourself usable, God is going to use you. Because he wants somebody. He's looking for somebody that he can use. So with those trials, don't let that knock you out of being used by God. Because that's exactly, that's exactly what the devil wants to do. If you're a child of God, he cannot own you. He cannot possess you, but he can try to knock you out of the battle. He can try to stop you from taking anybody else to heaven with you. He can try to stop you from saving by spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. He's going to try to stop that. Uh, You remember in the book of Acts where... They, they beat him up. They jumped all over Paul because he was preaching in the name of Jesus. Why? Because there is power in the name of Jesus. Many people get up and pray and this, that, and the other, but they don't mention Jesus. But when you mention Jesus, boy, they get offended. Why? Because there is power in the name of Jesus. You listen to me, the spiritual realm, the demons and the devil know They know God is real, and they know Jesus is real, and they know where the real battle's at. Even if the person that you're talking to, even if the person that is attacking you does not know where it's at, the devil does, his demons do, they know where the real battle is. And so with trials, we should say, God has allowed this trial to come to me. He has some good purpose in this trial for me. Even if I don't know what the purpose is, I'm going to try to find out. I'm going to try to understand what God wants me to get out of this. I don't understand the trial, but I'm going to try to get what God has for me in this. Amen. And God, I'm telling you, God will in some way or another show you, even if it's just a glimpse, even if it's just a glimpse, some things we may not see. We may not know. We may not know until we get to heaven. I know that uh, uh, my daughter had a baby, uh, a little boy. It would have been my grandson, but he he lived less than a minute, I think, or just over a minute, and he died. And I'll never fully understand why that baby uh, died. But all I can say is this, that I know, this is what I learned out of it, that God has a purpose for every life, no matter how short. That's right. God has a purpose for every life no matter how short. Amen to that. The greatest witness you can be is when everything is going wrong, but you say this, I choose to trust God. Hey, people are watching you. People are taking notice. In Acts chapter 7, verse 57 through 60, the Bible says, Then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord and cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet whose name was Saul. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he knelt down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not the sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. Here is a man getting stoned to death, rocks hurled at him until he is dead. And he is kneeling down, praying for these people that are murdering. Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. Maybe he had such spiritual insight that he could see that there was evil demonic forces driving those people, because a demon is looking for a vehicle that he can use to do his dirty, rotten work, and he's looking for somebody that he can use. And maybe, just maybe, Stephen could see that, that it's really not these people. There's really some deep, dark forces using these people. Because when a person's not saved, they can be overtaken uh, by the devil. The devil can't possess you if you are saved. And I'm not saying the devil can possess you uh, if you're not saved, but he definitely can influence you 
And if you get on drugs and alcohol and all that, you are opening up yourself for possession. You certainly are. You are giving them a pathway into your life. And so here this man, Stephen, he was giving them the greatest message ever that God loves you. He died for you. He wants to save you. He doesn't want you to go to hell. And what did they do in return? They threw rocks at him until he was dead. But listen to me. God had a purpose for that because Saul, the Bible says in that verse, they laid down their clothes at a young man's feet whose name was Saul. Saul saw that. He saw that man pray for those people that were murdering him. And I'm here to tell you, that would affect you. I don't care who you are. When you, if you see a man being murdered and that man is praying for the people that are murdering him, hey, it's going to have a great and astounding effect on those people and they wonder, man, nobody dies for something they don't truly believe in. He believes it down to the core of his being. And we should be setting that example too. When hard times come, people should see us turn to Christ, turn to God and say, I trust you, Lord. Whatever comes out of it, Lord, I trust you. Verse number three, James chapter one, verse number three. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience knowing this that the trying of your faith work is patience so how do you get patience by the trying of your faith and if you're serving god you're going to have your faith tried but you remember when they come problems are the price of progress if you're going to build a building or a home you're going to run into hundreds, if not thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of problems with pipes and wires and concrete and rebar and shingles and windows and carpet and plumbing and this and that. There's going to be mega problems, but there's a goal in mind, is there not? The goal is to build a nice building. And there's going to be problems. You think about a football player who practices in a game. Could you imagine if somebody didn't play for five years and they sat on the couch and all of a sudden, all of a sudden, they went to their house and got them up and said, hey, come on, we're going to play in the NFL uh, and we're going to play in the Super Bowl. Can you imagine how they would perform? It would be horrible, wouldn't it? If they got up off the couch and they go send them out there on the field, they wouldn't last five minutes. They'd be passed out, knocked over. Uh, they'd probably hurt themselves worse than anybody else would hurt them. Why? Because they're out of shape. They haven't been doing what they, they should be doing. And I'm here to tell you, Christian, without problems in your life, we would not develop endurance. Resistance, listen to me, resistance makes you grow in strength. It's the resistance of the wind that picks an airplane up off the ground to make it fly. It's the resistance that a boat sits in the water that it causes it to rise to the top buoyancy it's resistance that resistance god can use that resistance in your life to lift you lift you up and make you soar like an eagle if you respond the way god told you to respond he wants to make you stronger a person doesn't come become a bodybuilder by sitting on the couch no they lift heavy weights over and over and over and it makes them stronger. And the trials in your life are the same way. They make you stronger. Amen. God wants to use you. God needs to use you. God wants to use you because he loves you and he wants to see others saved. Are you willing today to submit? Say, God, here I am. Despite all these problems, God, I just want to serve you. Will you use me, Lord? I'm here. I'm willing. Verse number four, but let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. You know, we'll rush to get a quick fix. We sure will. We'll rush to get out of a trial instead of allowing that test or that trial to complete the work in us that God wants to complete. I know I had uh, COVID-19 pretty, pretty, pretty bad enough to put me in a hospital for about seven days, and I know... Now, I didn't think I was going to die, but I was sure getting sicker and sicker awful fast. And I just come to a, uh, had some peace about it and said, God, wh whatever, whatever you want, Lord, I'm here. If you want to take me, I'm ready. I don't want to leave my family. I love my wife and my kids. I want to see them grow up. But, but God, 
if that's what's going to happen. I have, and I had total peace about it. No more worries. Thank God for that. Death had lost its sting. Amen. And listen to me. No problem is too great or too big for our Heavenly Father. And listen, some problems in your life might, might not ever be removed while you're in this life. You may have a sickness. You may have rheumatoid arthritis or lupus or, or, or fibromyalgia. And that problem won't never get removed in this life. But I'm here to tell you, one day you'll step into eternity and the glory and, and you won't even remember how bad that stuff felt. You won't remember God's going to wipe away all the tears, he said. You won't remember the hurt and the pain. And you'll forever be with the Lord in a glorious place. And let me tell you, I look forward to that day. Amen. I certainly do. I don't look forward to death, but I look forward to spending uh the rest of eternity with our Savior. And so those things that can't, that are not going to be removed, you know, we just have to learn to accept them and prove what he said. My grace is sufficient for the three times Paul sought to remove that thorn in the flesh. And God said, my grace is sufficient for thee. I'm here to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, his grace is sufficient for you. Amen. Some problems in life are removed, and when we have learned our lessons from them, I'm going to say that again. Some problems in life will be removed, but God usually won't remove that until you've learned the lesson that He has for you in your life. And true peace, true peace comes when you submit to the will of God. If a Christian is out of the will of God, I can guarantee you that Christian has no peace. If a Christian is living in sin, I can promise you they'll have no peace. The Holy Spirit will not allow them to have any peace. True peace comes when you submit to the will of God. Verse number five. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. You know, the Bible doesn't give a specific answer to every problem that arises in life. He doesn't give a specific answer if you have fibromyalgia, how you're supposed to do and what you're supposed to do. But what God's word does give us principles to live by. And listen to me. Spiritual wisdom is the application of God's word in your life. It's not something that you can't obtain. It's not some theologian sitting up in a tower somewhere that's had 900 years of school. No, it's simply you taking God's word and his principles and you apply it to your life and you live by it. Amen? That's what it is. Verse number six. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. Listen to me. Ask knowing God can and has the power to do so. How big is God? Oh, the Bible says that he can measure the universe with the span of his hand. Amen? How big is God in your mind? Not that that matters, but it, what does matter is how to make you behave. It will matter on what you do. Amen. When you go to God, you know that God can and has the power to do so. Amen. He certainly does. And I'm here to tell you, those trials, they can be a good thing in your life. Those hurts, they, they can be a good thing in your life. God can use those to do things that you never dreamed of, if you will, but submit to God's will and say, Lord, whatever happens, I'm here. God, I trust you. I know that you've allowed this in my life to improve my relationship with you, to improve my walk with you, to improve my testimony, to make me a stronger Christian, to grow me spiritually. God, I know you've allowed this in my life and I trust you with it. And let me tell you, if you're not saved, you're on your own. You're on a limb all by yourself. If you're not saved, the Bible says today is a day of salvation. What do I have to do, preacher? You've got to repent of your sins and put your faith and trust in the finished work of the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. Pray you have been blessed by today's message. If you have been saved or are in need of a prayer, please contact us at 352 247 9200. That's 352-247-9200. Thank you for tuning in to Crossbound Ministries Radio Broadcast. 
Will you please pray about supporting our ministry and broadcast? You can go to crossboundministry.com or send your support or a gift to P.O. Box 7, Inverness, Florida, 34451. That's P.O. Box 7, Inverness, Florida, 34451. For a gift of $10 or more, we will send you a booklet. Please pray for us as our ministry and radio broadcast grows. Tune in every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. to hear a message from our preacher, Mike Sadler. You can follow Crossbound Ministry on Facebook, YouTube, and visit us on the web at crossboundministry.com. If you are a pregnant woman in need of help, there is hope. You can reach out to the Citrus Pregnancy Center. There are locations in Inverness and in Crystal River. Their phone number is 352-341-5176. That's 352-341-5176. This broadcast has been sponsored in part by Henley's Grading Incorporated for all your land clearing and hauling needs. Located in Hernando, Florida, 352-897-3507. That's 352-897-3507. This program is sponsored by Crossbound Ministry of Inverness, Florida.